What's going on everybody? It's your fishing buddy back with another video for y'all and today I went down to the dam, I caught some skipjack, I got them back to the crib and I just wanted to make a quick little video to show y'all how to prepare those and put in the freezer so you can pull them out and use them as catfish bait as needed. So with no further ado, let's get right into it. So you're going to want to have you an old towel that you don't really put your face on or whatever or good wash detergent one. Some paper towels, I think these like 68 cent. 86 cent or something like that from Walmart. We're gonna use a little knockoff brand food saver right here. Uh, we got the food saver rolls. This right here is gonna keep our skipjack, keep our bait fresh for as long as possible. Hopefully we ain't keeping it in the freezer for a year. Hopefully we, you know, using our bait, using whatever we put in the freezer. First thing we're going to want to do is dry off the skipjack real good because the oxygen in the water is not our friend when it comes to the freezer. So I had these in a, like an ice slurry. And what that is is just uh, ice and water with salt in it. So when you go to freeze your fish, mostly where they hold uh, the most moisture is in the gills. See, watch this. You take and you squeeze these gills. That's where a lot of your, your water is gonna come out. It would be a good idea to rinse off the slime, but for me, I think that slime be good flavor. Squeeze on them gills. Don't even worry about it. You ain't gonna hurt the fish. You feel me? Get everything as dry as possible. Squeeze them eyeballs a little bit. Squeeze that water up out of there. Another thing for me, unless you're using ice water, which I don't want to because I don't want my hands all cold, it's going to warm the fish up a little bit. And once these skipjack or shad once they die, they're going to start like rotting, like decomposing immediately. It's always good to keep you some catfish bait on hand. Sometimes it's hard to catch bait. And if you like me, you don't want to go buy it. No, me, I'm cheap. It's like going and spending my money on chicken and shrimp and then i don't catch nothing and i be thinking like i could just ate that chicken or that shrimp that's how i be thinking chicken livers are pretty cheap but i have yet to catch like a monster catfish using chicken livers i'm i've yet to catch a monster catfish on uh night crawlers but one time i was down at my spot and when amigo nuevo that was fishing down there he caught like a 40 pounder off a night crawler i was tripping tripping like, I couldn't believe it. Like, it didn't even look right. Like, it didn't even look right. The, uh, that big old mouth. I mean, that mouth was big enough to fit his both of his hands and probably both of my hands in that little night crawl. I mean, night crawls are big, but that little night crawler hanging out the side of his mouth on that hook. But I mean, what he was fishing with, he was planning on catching a big old catfish. Because I mean, he had like, yeah, he had river monster gear where he was fishing with. But I've yet to catch a monster. Actually, I'll fit anything except for uh, 
Shad and Skipjack. Those are my go-tos. Skipjack ain't the... It's not the hardest fish to catch, but... Everybody's not in a position to catch Skipjack. Like, the only places I've ever heard of people catching Skipjack is... Tennessee, uh, Alabama, like the Tennessee River and the Ohio River, and uh, Gunnersville Dam. Other than that, I haven't heard of anybody catching skipjack anywhere else. My uncle from back home, like I live in Tennessee now, I'm from North Carolina. But my uncle, my great uncle from back home, he always telling my mama, tell that boy bring me some skipjack. My mama come out here to visit, see if y'all can bring me some skipjack back. And when I first moved out here, I didn't even know what skipjack was. Like I had caught some like 2018 and i called him i was i was out at uh percy priest dam damn it percy priest and i caught some i didn't even know what they were but uh you know being me i bought them back to the crib anyway i didn't plan on eating them and I actually used them for bait, but I put them in a crayfish trap. In a minnow trap to catch crayfish, crawdads. Little did I know, I had catfish candy. I'm gonna be straight up with y'all. One thing about black folks, that fish, <laughs> we gonna bring it home. We gonna put that thing on a stringer and ask questions later. Man, it took me a long time to realize like, I don't know, I call it like, it was just a childish way of thinking for me. Cause like as a kid, I would, uh, man, I would, I would fill my mama's freezer with fish. Like they went and got a deep freezer. Cause I would have like, fish and squirrels and all kind of stuff in the uh in the freezer so instead of telling me not to they just went and got a deep freezer thought that was pretty cool i feel that uh it took me a long time it took me a long time to to get to the point where i would put fish back in the water and be like i don't need to bring this home Let that thing seal up. Boom. That's where we at with it. But yeah, some stuff I just didn't eat. Like, I didn't know people didn't eat bass. I was tripping. As I got more into just bass fishing in the bass fishing community and uh, just hearing all the stuff that people say about bass, a lot of people don't eat bass. They don't know why they don't eat bass. People ask me like, you eat bass? Ew. And I'd be offensive, you know what I'm saying? I'm on some like, who raised you, bruh? But you know, I get it. I get it now, you know what I'm saying? I understand why people feel the way they feel about eating bass. You know, people want to keep the genetics and everything uh, especially on those big bass, like in the water, in the body of water, preserve the fisheries for the future generations. That's what's up, I get it. That thing suck the mess out of that fish. But I ain't gonna lie to you, I still eat bass. I wouldn't mind somebody hitting me up and want me to come do a little bit of Pond management form, tell me something like, anything you catch under one pound, take it with you. Yeah, yeah. 
I clean your pond right up. Come back to the crib, have a fish fry. I don't like to uh, freeze and thaw and then freeze again. So if I put multiple fish in a bag, then when I take it out, I'm going to have to reseal it, reseal that other fish. Like I might be going fishing and I might only need one or two. So I made the mistake with shad, like freezing six, seven shad in a thing. And I might only be going fishing for like an hour or something. So for me, it's like, I don't, this saves me the trouble of trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I take out what I need, boom. And when I get to where I'm going, I don't want my bait to be frozen solid. Like I could leave it frozen and then get to where I'm going and try to saw on it and you know, take it apart then, which might not be a bad idea for you. But for me, this is how I like to do it. If somebody wants some bait, I go in my freezer, give them a skipjack, boom. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is more work, but that's how I like to do it, to each his own, right? I think it's actually to each its own, but... I said what I said. Man, this this made me want to go catfishing tonight. But I got to get up early. I got early clients coming in the morning. Get their hair cut. You know what? I'm going to get on Timu and see if I can find these food saver bags. You know what I'm saying? For the low ski. You know I'm going to let you know. I'll be getting all kinds of stuff off Timu. I got some uh some sponges to wash dishes and stuff with off Timu. Like $1.99. I think I got like... 20 of 40 sponges. I got some, it was something crazy. And they're gonna be sponges you can wash your car with and everything. Just check on there. They say they steal your information. They mess around and try to steal my information. They gonna be mad. That thing gonna be like decline. And when you do put two in there, make sure they ain't touching. Trust me, just make sure they ain't touching. If they're touching when you put them in, it's gonna be hard on you. Try and break them apart and everything. And if you do happen wanna happen to wanna use just one and save the rest for later, it's gonna they're gonna be hard as a brick. You ain't gonna be able to break them apart. Oh man, my bad. I messed up right here and uh I didn't have my microphone hooked up, so I'm going to voice it over for y'all. So what we're going to do is, this is for, this is a DIY vacuum seal type thing. If you don't have a vacuum sealer, we're going to take this Ziploc bag right here, and we're going to make it do what it do. You feel me? We're going to get all the air out. Um, like I said before, it's the, the oxygen and the water the reason why our fish get freezer burn or whatever we put in the freezer. So this plastic bag ain't big enough to put this whole skipjack in there. So I'm just gonna cut it in half, cut it in half, throw that bad boy in there like that. So then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna get it situated. And like I was saying, make sure that you don't have a fish touching, just in case you wanna take one out or you take your fish out and it's you take your fish out to the water and it's still partially frozen or something. It's not hard as a brick and you don't have such a hard time trying to separate your fish. So you're just gonna make sure you don't get any water down in the zip part. You wanna submerge the bait down in the water. And as you can see, the pressure of the water pushes out the oxygen from the bag. And you just want to help it, you know, separate those fish a little more, try to do a better job of separating them, put them a little further apart. 
That way you can make sure that that bag closes around each part of the fish. Yeah, there we go. Work that oxygen out. Make sure you're not getting water in your bag. That's going to defeat the purpose. Now you can start to seal that bag from one side to the other. Make sure it's sealed good. Make sure, go back over it a couple of times and make sure that it's all the way sealed. And once you get, you know, three fourths of it sealed, go ahead and put that side down in the water. Making sure it's sealed good so you don't get water down in there. Leave that open inside that remaining one fourth, leave it open. So the rest of that air can go ahead and come out. And once you're comfortable with the amount of air that you've gotten out, go ahead and seal the rest of it. With that last one fourth out of the water. Seal it up. Boom. And that's where we at with it. A little DIY vacuum seal. It's todo por el video de hoy. Gracias por estar aquí conmigo. I appreciate you being here for show for show. I got another video that's gonna drop on Catch and Skip Jack and how I like to do it. If there's something you'd be interested in, be on the lookout for that. If you could click that like, smash that subscribe button, that would greatly help me out. You dig? So uh, until next time, good luck out there on the land.